All right, I just picked this up today and I'm pretty excited. This is sort of a first impressions type video on the Beretta 9000S in 40 Smith & Wesson. I haven't shot it yet, so this is just kind of my first impressions on it, picking it up, holding it for the first time. I'm pretty excited about this uh, and it kind of defies my typical convention because I don't like tilting barrels and I've always sworn I'd never have a polymer gun and now I have both in a Beretta, which is weird, very weird. That's not typical for them. This was the first polymer gun that they put out on the market in 2000, and they took it off the market in 2005 to make room for the PX4 series, which kind of encompasses the target audience that they were aiming for. It's Italian made, it's not made in the US. Uh, its biggest claim to fame was Minority Report, the gun that was used by Tom Cruise's character in the film. It's been in a few other movies and stuff like that. For the most part, though, it's pretty obscure. You don't see them very often, especially because they're not made anymore. They're very hard to find. One of the most unusual things about it is the tilting barrel, and it's not just because Beretta typically doesn't use a tilting barrel system, but it's because it's not a typical Browning Petter style locking block. It's not the same action as a Browning High Power or a Glock or a SIG. It's different, and I'll show you how it's different when I take it apart. It achieves the same thing, but it doesn't quite work the same mechanically. Uh, another thing is the safety. Uh, it can be uh, cocked and locked, and it does have a decocker. Being able to carry a Beretta cocked and locked is also unusual. They don't make a lot of guns that work that way, uh, but they have some other ones. The purpose of this gun is concealed carry. It's a double stack. Uh, it's wide on top and skinny in the frame, which is also unusual. Uh, but it's certainly a lot smaller and, and lighter than carrying something bigger and bulkier like a 92 or an 8000. I've been carrying the 8000. And this is about 200 ounces lighter, and it carries the same amount of ammunition. So it's it's a step up. It's an improvement, especially for the summertime, but still not quite as small as something like a Smith & Wesson Shield or an XDS or a Glock 43. Uh, one of the first things that strikes me is that this is basically uh, Beretta's strange twisted hybrid between a Glock 26 and a CZ-75. It has the very, uh, very thin uh, upper slide. Most of it is concealed inside the frame, and then it attaches inside the frame uh, and tracks inside the frame instead of outside, kind of like a CZ-75, and then you have the safety, which is set up the same way. And in terms of size and construction, uh, very similar in size to a Glock 26, maybe a little bit bigger. It's a little better on ammo. Comes with 10 round magazines. This one only came with one. It was used. Uh, one of the cool things that they innovated with this gun, though, was the built-in finger extension, which they still sell in the PX4 Storm subcompact uh, magazine. In fact, I've heard a lot of people say the only thing they like about the Storm subcompact at all is the magazine extension. It's very clever and to my knowledge because they've got it patented, hey look at that, uh, nobody else sells anything like this. So you can bring it up for concealed carry or if you got bigger mitts like mine you can pop it out and then you don't gain a lot of height but you do have a much better grip for your pinky. Okay. This is a double single action hammer fired. As you can see with the safety on, the hammer does stay back. That's one thing you can do with this gun that you can't do with like a 92 or a PX4 Storm or most of the other Berettas you'll find. If you flip the safety up further, it will decock and then you can fire it double action. You'll have a longer trigger pull. Or you can carry it this way as you would a 1911 or something like that. You'll have a much lighter trigger pull. Traditional three dot white sights. 
Night sights actually are available. They're one of the few parts that you can still find for this gun in abundance. And you can get them for a little over 100 bucks. Takedown is similar to a Beretta 92. You have a button on one side that you press. And while you're pressing it, it releases this lever. It's a little hard to do, but I'm still getting the hang of it, especially one-handed. And then once that lever is flipped, the slide will slide forward and off the gun. And then from there, you have your captured recoil spring, polymer guide rod and your barrel. And you can see right here, these two locking lugs on the side of the barrel are what makes it different than a Browning Petter. They don't engage into a single lug on the bottom and a big giant block on top which gets pushed down by the slide. They sit into the slide right here and then engage into these two grooves in the frame. So there's your difference. Like I said, it achieves the same thing, but it's a different locking system, technically speaking. Uh, frame's nice and light. It is unusual in the fact that the grip is so much slimmer than the slide. It's kind of got like a teardrop figure. It's kind of, kind of weird. You'll notice one thing is the drop safety kind of an interesting uh, shape to it. It looks a lot like a Glock's drop safety on the inside, that little round button right there, but it pushes up into this Beretta style drop safety up on top, which is kind of similar to the 92s and the PX4s. But that device is in place so that you can basically chuck this thing across a parking lot with a round in the chamber and it won't go off. That's pretty typical of guns these days. Reassembly, it's easy, same way. I can even do it one-handed. And then it just slides right back into the frame and the takedown lever will automatically reset. Some other cool features and gizmos are the magazine release, which I believe is reversible. It's not truly ambidextrous, but it is reversible. The safety and decocker is reversible, is ambidextrous, I should say. You can manipulate it from both sides. And then what's typical on Berettas now is an extractor, which is also serving as a loaded chamber indicator. If there were a round in the chamber, which of course there's not, uh, you would be able to see a small red tab and because it sticks out, it's tactile, so you can feel it in the dark. Say someone comes in in the middle of the night, all you have to do is run your thumb over this. You don't have to turn the lights on. You don't have to do a brass check and look. You can just feel that there is a round in the chamber and the gun is ready to go. For safety reasons, you always want to pull back and check anyway, but if you're not able to, you don't have to. Because this is an Italian-made Beretta, you will see the proof mark stamped on the frame. And like I was saying earlier, the thinness of the grip versus the thickness of the slide, that sort of upside down teardrop figure makes for a very, very comfortable grip, but it's gonna be very top heavy, especially when it's not loaded. That's not necessarily a bad thing because the one disadvantage of having a tilting locking system is gonna be a tendency to be a little jumpier. Beretta typically doesn't make guns with tilting locking mechanisms and usually I like to applaud them for that because they like to stick towards locking systems like falling block or rotating barrel that don't jump around on you. They absorb recoil better. This is not meant to be a gun that's fun to shoot at the range though. This is made specifically for concealed carry and that's kind of what I bought it for. So I'm going to switch over from my uh, 8000 to this and start carrying it for a little while and see what I think. And of course I'm going to take it to the range next week and run a few hundred rounds through it and see how I really, really like it. But first impression is it's it's nice. Uh, it's definitely not the best concealed carry gun out there. I think it's better than the PX4 Storm Subcompact by a long shot. 
uh, even just holding it. You haven't even shot it yet, but definitely believe that that's going to be the case. And it's certainly better for the summertime and warm weather than carrying a full-size gun like an 8000 or a 92. So I'm sure you'll hear from me again on what I think about this, but for now, I'm pretty excited and pretty happy with it. Not a bad price, uh, $400 used from Thunder Ammo in Hominy, Oklahoma, FFL transfer through Village Tactical right down the road from here. And I'll probably be carrying my typical self-defense load, which is uh, Federal Hydroshock 155 grain. I'll let you know what I think after I've shot it. Until then, thanks for watching.